For the last 14 years, the Parent Resource Center located at Howard Academy has been available to any parent or guardian that has a student attending a Title I school and needs help in a certain area of learning. Parents, family members can come and visit us. We're open from 8 o'clock till 4 o'clock during the school year, Monday through Thursday, and Fridays 8 to 4. They can come in, visit us, check out some materials to practice their skills at home with their children. If children are struggling in uh, a certain area, like main idea, uh, they can pick a game and take home to practice skills. If parents cannot make it to the Resource Center, there is something else available to help and it has been around the district for the same amount of time as the center. If parents cannot visit the Title I Resource Center, we do have a Parent Resource Center on Wales that they can visit at their school sites. The um, Parent Resource Center on Wales visits all Title I schools four times a year, one time during each quarter. So um, parents are given um, a flyer. You'll see a flyer that comes home. Um, it's going to be a goldenrod color and it will give you the date and time. The van usually comes to the campuses 10.30 to 2.30. At the van, they can check out free materials. They don't have to bring the things back, or they can check out things that they'd like to work on and return to the van. They can return it to their school, or they can return it to the, the center here. The Parent Resource Center on Wheels has limited space, so if there is something special that a parent needs, all they have to do is request it. Parents can request certain materials and we can get it ready and we can send it to the school through the courier or Flora can, Miss Weathers can take it on the van the next time she visits. Um, all they really need to do is give us a call. Another way parents can help their children is by attending one or more sessions at Lunch and Learn on Tuesday the 29th at Howard Academy between 1030 and 2. We're trying to be very flexible for parents, so if they can come during their lunch time, they can grab a quick bite here with us and also bring something home for their children that night to work on math. For those parents who've been overwhelmed trying to help their students with the new math, this program is for you. Math is not new. Two plus two is always four, but the way we're looking at math is new. Our new Florida standards in math are much different than they used to be. We're focusing on different types of skills, so we want to enable parents to help their children at home with those skills. We're going to help parents so parents can help children at home. For more information on Lunch and Learn, call 671-4171. Attention parents, Wednesday, September 30th is an early release day, so students come home two hours early. They're often referred to as half days, but technically they are really early release days. Per state law, students have to be in school a certain amount of hours to count towards a school day. And the release of two hours um, at the end of the day to allow for teachers to gather with paraprofessionals too and get uh, receive professional development does count for both a teacher day and a student day. Remember, students come home two hours early on Wednesday, September 30th. As you know, when families are engaged in their child's learning experience, students achieve more. Further research suggests that students perform better academically, have fewer discipline problems, and become more responsible adults when their fathers are involved in their education. Florida's educational leaders are providing opportunities for fathers to engage more fully in their child's education and strengthen connections between fathers and schools. It's a wonderful thing as a parent to be able to get up every day with my daughter, uh, both of us to get ready for the day, and then not only do I come to work in the public schools in a middle school setting, but to be able to walk my daughter to school every day just next door at her elementary school. It's, it's something that years from now I'll look back and remember probably as one of those things that most parents don't get a chance to do, but I'm glad I do. Wow, this is actually kind of comfy. Marion County School Board needs more bus drivers, and I would do it, but I'm too young to do it. But you can. There's good benefits, flexible hours, if summer's off, you're off. If school's out, you're out. So you can spend more time with your kids. If you're interested, contact this number. 
Vanguard High School currently has two merit scholar semifinalists in their student body, Carolyn Imes and Stephen Williams Ortega. We will introduce you to Stephen next week. This week we focus on Carolyn as she explains how she got to this point in this process. Last October in my junior year I took the PSAT um, as well as the IB class and juniors all across America and because of the score I earned on the test I was qualified to be a National Merit semifinalist. They pick about 16,000 high school students um, across the nation. They divide it up by states that according to population and school standards and so roughly the top one percent of every state is chosen to become a semifinalist. She won't know if she has advanced until close to the end of the year. You find out in the spring, I think it's in February, um, sometime between February and April you're notified by letter whether you've progressed on to finalist status or not and the people who did not progress are also notified. Like the rest, she is hopeful. I'm hoping to become a finalist, hoping for one of the $2,500 scholarships, but there are only 2,500 of those. This is an enormous production. Um, this is the biggest production we've ever done at this school, by far. Set to take the stage at Westport High November 5th through the 15th, Jesus Christ Superstar involves a huge set. We're bringing this show into the audience. Um, a lot of it is to try to get more up close and personal and try to take a, a big huge space like this and make it more intimate. Um, there's such a, a vast distance between the seats and the stage that it was really important to, to bring this show into the audience's face. Uh, so phase one, as you can see, is to extend this set uh, a good oh, 30 feet or so out into the seats and we'll come right up to the seats. It actually will go even further than that into the audience where the characters will be able to walk through the seats, through walkways, uh, and have different areas where they can jump up and climb and um, even this whole area here behind me, this railing, they'll be making entrances and exits through this area. As it gets closer to showtime, we'll check back in with the Westport crew, including one student who has two major roles, one on stage and one off. Football season has kicked off, but there is another sport in full swing also, golf. And a girl from Westport knew very young that this was the sport for her. When I was seven, I started playing and I wanted to be a lawyer at that time. So I decided to learn to get those resources in order because typical lawyers do play golf with their clients. She also knows what the advantage is for her and for other women who choose this sport. Girls, it's easier for them to get scholarships for, all, for golf if you want to persevere in the sport because not a lot of people do play golf. It's very unordinary to find somebody who says, oh yeah, I'm on the golf team. And it actually makes a good subject to talk about if you have speech class or anything like that, if you want to talk about yourself because it makes you different from all the rest of the people. Speaking of golf, Marion County Public Schools is sponsoring a golf tournament as part of our fundraising efforts for the United Way of Marion County. The four-person scramble at the Ocala Golf Club will begin with a shotgun start at 12.30 on October 19th. That's a teacher work day. Schools and departments are being encouraged to field teams and whole sponsorships are available. For more information, contact Kathy Quellen in School Development and Evaluation. The tournament is just one part of the district's effort to raise $230,000 this year for the United Way. Superintendent George Tommen dropped in on the annual meeting of secretaries and clerical staff at CTAE recently. He spent some time greeting and chatting with some of the people who really keep our district running smoothly and then shared a bit of advice he was given a long time ago by a secretary. My first principalship, Ruth Wallace, Sunrise Elementary School. Mr. Tommen, just listen to me and do what I tell you to do. <laughs> and you know what I said? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We would like to thank the more than 225 different individuals, organizations, and companies who donated to our schools last year. Combined, you contributed just over $1 million to help our students and teachers. Here's how some of that money was used. 
Thanks to generous donations, I was able to purchase 16 iPad minis for my high school English classroom. In this day and age, there's an increase in computer-based testing, and it's difficult to always schedule time for students to be in a computer lab to utilize educational resources online. With these iPads in my classroom, students are given the freedom and the flexibility to be able to research, to write, to access those educational resources, and to be able to increase their learning. So thank you for your generous donations and for this investment in the children and in their education.